Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and let's talk a little bit about lighting, something that I think gets glossed over quite often in the world of 3D rendering. Now, if you're in the real world, uh, photography or cinematography, lighting is a huge part of your day. In fact, you probably have somebody or a whole team of somebody who's responsible for just the lighting of a photo shoot or film shoot. So it's not something that really gets glossed over um, in the real world. In fact, usually when I go to a photo shoot or a film shoot, the lighting takes up most of the time there. Setting up the lights and changing the lights and trying different lighting setups and tweaking the lights takes freaking forever. But in 3D, we don't really spend a lot of time on it. In fact, let's take a look at the steps involved in doing a simple product rendering. You need to get the geometry into the computer. So maybe you use a CAD import uh, pro, uh, plugin or maybe you model the product yourself and you've got to do some cleanup and some grouping and some UV and some camera angles for the final images. Basically, you're spending a lot of time on that, right? You're spending a decent amount of time prepping the geometry and getting it set up you know, for material assignment and rendering. And in terms of material assignment, again, it's something you probably spend a decent amount of time on. So if you're creating your own materials, obviously you're spending a good amount of time on that. But even if you're using a material library, you still got to dig in there and you want to name the materials on the product so you can get back to them later on. You may have to do some labeling or some branding on the product. And you may use a texture specific tool like Substance Designer to create materials um, for your product rendering. So again, you're spending a fair amount of time on the material creation for your rendering. But when it comes to lighting, what a lot of people do, myself included, you often just grab uh, your favorite HDR off your hard drive. Uh, or maybe if you're feeling really ambitious, take five minutes to set up some area lights or even a sunlight system, something like that. But not too often are you spending as much time on lighting as material creation or geometry prepping. And at the end of the day, lighting makes just as much of an impact on your final image as either of the other two steps. In fact, even more of an impact in a lot of cases. In fact, you can spot bad lighting from a mile away. And once um, HDR images became a primary source of lighting as seen and some really good ones got out there in the wild and people started reusing them, uh, that problem went away for the most part, like really terribly lit images. You don't see a lot of those anymore because of the availability of decent HDRs. But you do see a lot of images that are just kind of the same again and again and again. And when you're creating a specific image for a client, you're going to want to put a little more into it. And so that takes us to something similar to a, a, a texture uh, or material creation tool like Substance Designer. We're looking at a lighting creation tool. In this case, we're looking at HDR Light Studio, a program that's been around for quite a while. And I'm going to be doing a number of videos on this one, but this is just a sort of uh, quick look at the newest version because it has some cool moto specific features in there that I really like. So let's jump right into it. So here we are back in moto. And for this tutorial, we're gonna be using this cool Stormtrooper helmet. And I do wanna credit the artist who created this. It was downloaded from Sketchfab. The artist's name was, I'm gonna kill this name, but Alexander Zimiliad, I think it's pronounced and created this cool Stormtrooper helmet and made it available for download. So if you don't know, uh, artists on Sketchfab can make their creations available for download. You just need to cre uh, credit them if you make a tutorial or use it in, in something. And I'm not sure that you can use it for commercial purposes. Um, well, you might be able to, but you can certainly buy uh, products on here as well that you can use for commercial purposes. But Sketchfab is a great place to go. I love Sketchfab. Anyway, thank you, Alexander, for this sweet helmet. And we're gonna be using this um, as a prop for lighting here. now. So in this video, I'm not gonna go through HDR Live Studio in depth. I just wanna show what I think is the most important new feature of the Tungsten Drop 2 version that just came out. And that's the ability to use any number of renderers within the lighting tool itself. So I'll show you what I mean by that. When you wanna jump into the HDR Live Studio tool, you wanna to click uh, in the 3D viewport just to give HDR Live Studio a starting point. And then over here on the environment item in the shader tree, you'll see some options. And here we have three different options for renders. It supports the Moto Renderer, Octane, and also V-Ray. And so in this case, I'm gonna pick Octane and I'm just gonna hit Start. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna put a temporary image over here in my environment slot, a temporary um, live link to HDR Light Studio. And it's gonna launch the HDR Light Studio interface. So I'm gonna hit Start here and it's gonna bring up the interface. And here we go. And if you're not familiar with this, just as a quick recap, We've got a couple of different panels here. We have a light preview panel. In this case, we have the background gradient selected. Uh, we've got some light properties over here because you can change the colors and positions and all kinds of cool stuff with every light. We've got our main canvas here. And think of this as the big HDR image that's gonna be wrapped around your scene back in your 3D program once you're done with it. 
In HDR Light Studio, it's a live canvas that we can add and move lights and change their colors and subtract them and composite them and do all sorts of cool stuff and change the gradient or bring in uh, existing HDRs as backgrounds. It's really just a really, really cool, flexible way to work. Um, over here, we have our light list. Uh, think of this as almost as layers in Photoshop, but each layer is an actual light or gradient or lighting element. Toolbar over here, and we've got a couple of render windows. And so here's where this version gets really interesting because you used to just have this render view here, the HDR Load Studio built in and render view. Now it, in the older versions, and this program has been around for a while and it, it really has gotten consistently better every year. And they did eventually add their own rendering engine, which I think maybe uses iRay, I could be wrong. But what it'll do if I hit play here is it's going to generate a, sort of a temporary Alembic file and bring that geometry into the scene. So I'm just doing that right now. It's just grabbing the geometry as an Alembic file from Moto, and there's my Stormtrooper helmets. But there's no materials on there. This is not my final uh, rendering engine. This isn't Octane, this isn't V-Ray, this isn't Moto. So it's it can give me a decent idea of the lighting in the scene, but it's not ideal, because eventually I need to go back to Moto and really check and see how things are going. But that's just the old version. The new version gives me a new rendering so I don't even need this one anymore because now I've got Octane right here in the interface linked to my scene in Moto. So all the materials and everything else and the, the geometry, the way the camera is set up, it's all exactly as it will be in Moto. And so I just have to hit play here and it's going to start the Octane render. And there we go. There's our Stormtrooper helmets with their uh, materials on them and being lit by this gradient background. Now there's one thing you have to make note of, and that is because I have Octane set up and is default to be set up with an sRGB response curve um, already applied in the camera. And HDR Light Studio allows you, depending on the renderer you pick, to have a response curve as well. And here we've got none or sRGB or Rec 709. Now with the Moto renderer, you're getting the linear image into HDR Light Studio and you can pick your what here just like you would in the Moto preview. But because we're using Octane, Octane is only already giving us the corrected image. So I just want to set the what here to none, just to make sure this matches up exactly with what I have in Octane. Because in Octane, that what's already applied, and so we're getting that image here. I don't want it to apply it twice. Here I'm doing a double application of that sRGB gamma curve. Here, this is exactly how it's going to appear in my final render in Moto. So now that I'm here, I can actually start my lighting. And again, this is a lighting tool in the same way that Substance Designer is a material creation tool. And there's a ton of things you can do with it. So I'm not going to get into all of them by any means. I'm just going to do a quick lighting setup here and show you what you can do in this program. And using my final render here in the window, which is, is just so awesome, I know that everything I'm doing in my light setup is, is going to be reflected in the final image. So right now you can see the white paint is, reflect, is set to reflection. So white paint allows me to pick um, any sort of light and I can do a geometric light over here like a circular light or a rectangular light or I could pick a preset that has an uh, HDR image of a real light source and I can apply that to my scene. And with white paint set to reflection when I apply this rectangular area light here to my scene it's going to set the reflection of the light, the center point, to wherever I click. So it really is painting with light. So in this cool Stormtrooper helmet, if I want this HDR uh, uh, area light to reflect right here, I just click there and there's my reflection. So that's not something you can do just using the HDR image within Moto, right? You would have to bring in an image and then start rotating it around to try and get that reflection to where you want it. You've all done this. But here you just click. Looks good, maybe. Maybe I'll try it over here, click over here. You know, I can really click anywhere to get that light. And I can have multiple lights. Here, this is my round light that I had clicked earlier. I'm just going to click and drag and move it up over here. So you can move lights over here. Here I have it selected. Or I can also click and get a reflection, let's say, like right here. And I can do all kinds of things with these lights. I can change their color. I can, you know, tint them into another color, whatever I'm doing. Um, you can see this, this light's now another color. You really have tons of control over it. You can also set your light paint to a couple different modes. You can do like an illumination mode. And this is a little bit different. So it's not actually going to position the light in the, uh, we'll call it the canvas universe. This is the image that's going to be wrapped around your scene back in your 3D program. It's not going to change, it's not going to put it in a position where the, the center of the light is being reflected uh, exactly on the polygon that you click on. In an illumination mode, instead on the polygon I click on, it's going to 
um, find that polygon, then travel outwards from the normal of that polygon and give us a nice sort of diffuse lighting from that point. So it's really just placing a light in the 3D universe um, normal to the polygon that you're clicking on. So I want to let, you know, then I can go in and I can use some controls over here to just click and drag with my stylus, which I love to like increase the size of the light to get a nice fill light. So you've got fill lights, illumination mode works great for fill lights where um, reflection mode works great for placing key reflections. You can also, let's say, let's add another light. Let's do a, uh, like a, another rectangular light here. And just, I added it right here. And let's go to rim mode. And so rim mode obviously lets you um, click a rim light. So it'll actually place a light. It won't see the geometry here. It'll just place a light where I click in the scene. So I want a nice rim light behind these guys. I can click behind these guys like this. And, and then I've got my rim light here. You can even turn these other lights off if I just want to view the rim light all by itself. And I can even go down here to the background gradient and maybe turn down um, the intensity down here, the value ramp, so I can I can turn that down. Well, that one's black already, but let's turn down the white one. So I'm really just getting uh, this rim light and really knocking down uh, the intensity of this gradient. And you can see that here. So you have it, like I said, you have a ton of, of control. And so I can go back to my rectangular light here and I can just move it around manually or I can stretch it horizontally and really get a, sort of a cool rim light effect here. It, it's really pretty awesome what you can do. And again, the, the cool thing is this is my final image, right? So if I go back to Modo, you'll see it's actually updating in the background in Modo in, in real time. And, it, and here's our temp image, right? And this temp image is something that stays with the scene. So I can save the scene and come back and go you know, click this and, and fire up HDR Light Studio again. And it's gonna bring me back into the same environment. It's going to have all my lights over here. It's going to have all the settings. Um, it's persistent with the scene. So you don't throw away all your HDR Light Studio settings once you uh, finish a scene. It keeps all that stuff there. And then eventually, you know, you can work out on it over a number of hours or days or whatever. Or go back to it after the client gives you some suggestions and um, update your lighting and bake out another HDRI image. So if I want to do something like take this full Force Awakens, I can change the color to like a red. And I also like this color picker here. It gives all these different options in the area you're at. So let's just sort of do a deep red, like a Force Awakens poster. And um, you know, maybe move this up just a little bit. And I can increase the intensity if I want to. So I can increase the brightness of this light. It's pretty awesome. So that's looking pretty cool. That's looking Last Jedi-ish. And, and here's what I'm talking about. It's really worthwhile to spend time with your lighting. And you really can't spend time and have a lot of control with your lighting if you're just loading up HDRIs and spinning them around and trying new ones and seeing what kind of works. Here I can really spend time with my lighting and really get what I want. In fact, I like this uh, rim light reflection here, but I'm not getting enough light on the front, right? I need just a little bit of light on the front to brighten up these faces a little bit. So I can do that by turning this rectangular light I'd added earlier back on. And there it is with that reflection right there I'd added earlier. And I can just go back to illumination mode because I just want to put it normal to whatever polygon I'm clicking on and just get a little bit of a fill light in the front. Something like this. And I can also go over here. I can drag it around or I can adjust the latitude and longitude over here as well. So I can move it up or down. Get a little bit of below the stormtroopers and maybe um, knock down the brightness a little bit. I just want to brighten that face up a little bit. But I still want it primarily backlit. So something along these lines. Again, this is just something you can do in a lighting tool that you can't really do um, with just an HDR. Maybe something like that. And lastly, you see this um, bit of a reflection from this uh, red rim light that's bleeding onto the front here. Let's say I don't like that. Well, over here, there's something called a dark light. So I can click the dark light. Here it is in the scene. Go back to reflection mode. And so where I place, uh, click on the, on the model is where it's gonna place the center of this light. And so I click there, and now I'm just sort of blacking out that reflection. I mean, honestly, how cool is that? I mean, this is really a fantastic tool for doing professional lighting. 
And if you go back to what I was saying at the beginning of the program, you know, how much time do you spend setting up your scene? How much time do you spend with all your materials? How much time do you spend in Substance Designer? I mean, spending time in lighting is going to get you a better image. And in order to really spend time efficiently in lighting, it doesn't involve loading up a bunch of HDRIs and rotating them around and all that guesswork. You need a lighting tool. And being able to have your final renderer right here, my Octane renderer, my V-Ray renderer, my Moto renderer within my lighting tool is really the last piece of the puzzle because there's a ton of different tools here. And I'll go over some of them in, in, in uh, subsequent videos. Um, but it's really a game changer in terms of lighting to bring that renderer here into the lighting tool and to be able to really, essentially in real time now, um, art director lighting. Yum, yum.